Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my five top Revit preferences. So the five things that I usually do or almost always do or maybe always do in Revit, things that I do to make my projects look better or just to give it my personal signature to the project. I really like the fact that in architecture you can really have your drawings, your models, things like that. You can always make them, uh, you can always personalize them a little bit and um, just give a little personal touch to make it look uh, like it was done by you. So uh, these are the five things that I love to do in for each of my projects that I do in Revit. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And also, if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials, multiple tutorials each week. Also, I make one uh, advanced Revit course each week, they're all over one hour long, these advanced courses, and you can find them on my Patreon first link in the description. So I have over 28 courses so far, so check that out. And uh, also there you can find all of my Revit project files, like the files that I'm going to be using in today's tutorial. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the uh, five uh, personal Revit preferences. Uh, okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see over here, I have a project here, a project file, and of course this can be found on my Patreon. And here we have a simple house. Now the first preference that you can see immediately over here is the trees. So the trees, these are the regular Revit trees, and I almost never use them for my projects just because I think they look ugly. Uh, of course they look extremely ugly in this like uh, hidden line view but also if I go to realistic and they kind of switch to images and let's wait for a rabbit for give it rabbit for a second to, to switch there we go so they look like this again it's a bit better it's an improvement and it looks like this in renderings but still it can be kind of uh, weird looking and especially it can be extremely annoying when you're doing like top-down views I like to do some sort of a, a site plan rendering things like that when you spin this around and look from the top these trees look pretty flat that's because there are assembled out of flat images they look like this it's really bad so I, I prefer not to use those so let's get go back to hidden line so actually what I do for for trees is let's go into the site plan here so let's switch to the site plan and I'm just going to go here to component and just to show you what I do for trees so let's see where are the trees okay I use these 3d trees so let me place this one here uh, this one here I think I have one more, let's see, dead tree, yeah, I really like this one, this one looks cool. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I like to use uh, these three trees for most of my projects. There are some more, but I prefer using these, as you can see, they are 3D trees, they are 3D geometry. When rendered, they look pretty well. And here's one uh, here, this is like a smaller one, this is like a bigger one, and this is like one huge dead tree. I, I use it when I want to create some dramatic looking renderings, it looks kind of weird and spooky. So <laughs> this is the one that I use for that. So uh, that's my first preference is using 3D trees. Okay, my second preference is doing 3D sections. So here I have actually a pretty nice section here. Uh, and if you want to check out how I created this amazing looking section, I suggest you uh, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Uh, my last week's course was all about creating cool uh, Revit graphics and views. And I show you how to create this cool looking section with the background and everything and little people and all of that. But the sections can be nice, but I actually prefer doing 3D sections. They show space a little bit better and I really like that so let me show you how I do that so I'm just going to go here to uh, zero zero floor plan uh, and I'm just going to go here and do a simple uh, a 3d view so go here to the kind of 3d view go to a camera view now here is my section and I'm just going to go here maybe from the kitchen just a little bit backwards so just like that and then open up a view that looks just like this there we go, so we have that view. Now I'm going to go here and turn on the section box in the properties, and then I'm going to go back to my floor plan, or actually let's go to that 3D view, and now you select the section box. Now while it's selected, go to your uh, floor plan view, and then you make it a bit smaller, so it only grabs from this section line that we have over here. So let's go just like that, and then you go back to your 3D view, and it looks like this. Now you can select the crop region and kind of extend it so you can grab the whole entire house 
but that's basically how you create these uh, these 3D sections. And there we go, so we have a 3D section. Actually, in a house like this, I would probably lift it up a little bit. So for that, I would go here to the navigation wheel and then just go up just a little bit. Maybe like that. So now I would just close the, the navigation wheel and extend it a little bit. Okay, and of course, if you need any further uh, information on that, I, I have a tutorial on 3D sections. Just type in Balkan Architect 3D sections. And also I have a tutorial, a complete tutorial about this navigation wheel if you want to check that out. Uh, again, just uh, type in Balkan Architect navigation wheel. Also, I'll be leaving links in the description of this video, so check it out if you want. Okay, so that's my second preference. Let's move on to my third preference. So let's go to the floor plan. So here we have a floor plan and as you can see uh, it's kind of detailed. We have the, the kind of structural part of the wall. Now we have this nice batting line that I painted orange which looks uh, quite cool. And uh, this is really nice for floor plans but it can be kind of sometimes overwhelming especially if you're printing it out in a smaller scale. So what I'm going to be doing uh, to kind of improve that is just to select this wall and then go here into edit type and then here we have this uh, coarse uh, scale fill pattern. So what does this basically mean? When you go here to the, uh, let's maybe move this out of the way. Okay, so when you go down here to your level of detail, if you set it to coarse, you can have a certain uh, fill pattern for your wall that's different for detailed or medium level of detail. So if I set this to solid fill, and if I set this to black, and if I hit apply, okay, and now if I now it's just a regular wall, but that's because here we're at fine level of detail. If we go to medium, it's going to stay, stay the same, but if I go to coarse level of detail, as you can see, it goes black. Now, in this case, I'm using this orange batting line, so it kind of pops up, but if you're using the, just the regular black batting line, it would actually blend into the walls. You can do the same thing for these smaller walls, so just select one wall, go into edit type, and then change this to solid, fill, hit apply, okay, and there we go. As you can see, it looks a bit better for kind of uh, smaller floor plans. Another thing about floor plans, and that's my next preference that's kind of annoying is, as you can see, the furniture here, it's quite dark, and I like my furniture to be a bit lighter, so what I actually do for that uh, furniture is I change uh, the color. So I do it half tone or a bit gray, something like that. So if I'm doing a complex project where I'm going to be having, uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, I'm going to have one simple uh, floor plan and then one detailed floor plan, something like that. Then for furniture, what I would do is just uh, go here to VG overrides or visibility graphics overrides, open up that dialog and here just go to uh, furniture and then just check half tone. Hit apply. Okay. And as you can see here, furniture is now in, in, in half tone and it's gray. Now the problem with this, if I go to maybe a different floor plan, it's going to switch back to being not gray and it's going to be black. So alternatively what you can do if I go just a step back to do it for a complete project just for uh, for for each floor plan section whatever if you want to change this to be black you need to go here to manage find your object styles open that dialog up and here find model objects search for furniture and then you would actually have to change the color. Now I use either gray this darker gray or this light gray and as you can see here the slider goes from here to here. I actually go like to go from some sort of a mid-tone, select that, hit apply, okay and as you can see now furniture is that like gray mid-tone so that kind of helps out a little bit. Okay and my uh, last one is going to be using walls. Uh, I'm just checking out my notes. So it's going to be using walls for furniture elements. So for example, here for the kitchen, I have this element and it was, it's furniture, it's, it was modeled in place. So that's just an in place component. If I select it, it says here, edit in place, but let's, uh, let's hide that for a moment. So I'm just going to go here and hide that element. So usually for kitchens, because kitchens are always different, you always have a different uh, looking kitchen, so I, I like to use something a bit more flexible. So what I was using so far is I would go here to architecture and just go for wall, and then I would create a thicker wall. 
So I will just go with a basic wall. So let's go with generic 200. Go into edit type and here go to structure. Change that to like, uh, or let's let's duplicate that. So I would call this uh, casework, for example. Hit enter. So these would be some cabinets, things like that. So I would change the the thickness to like 60 centimeters, which is like the default uh, the default thickness for kitchen elements. I would just hit OK, and then for the base offset, I would just go zero, and then the top offset, I would go uh, top constraint, I would go unconnected with the 100 centimeter offset. So I would just place that wall here, just like that. And basically, I would I would use th this wall uh, in order to represent my uh, my casework. So I just place it like that. I don't know, up to this here, uh, this here um, oven or whatever. So I would use something like that. Now, luckily, uh, I found a better way, and that's to have a separate family for that, which is a line-based family, so it can be easily edited. So let me just go here to component, and I'm just going to go with my uh, where is my storage family? Let's see. Uh, so far. Okay, here we go, my storage family. So this is a line-based storage family. So you just place it like this, you extend it with a line, and then you can make the thickness like 60 centimeters. And then you place it, and as you can see, it has this drag point, so you can extend it. So this is basically a storage family that's line-based. I have a tutorial on that as well. So check out uh, that tutorial as well. I'm, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description. Okay, so that covers my Revit references. I hope you have enjoyed these, and I hope you start using them for your projects just to make them look interesting. And tell me in the comment section below, what are some of your uh, Revit preferences? What are some of the things that you like to use in each project that you do. Okay, so that covers this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a nice day and uh, I'll see you with another tutorial in a few days. Bye.